Abraham Lincoln was walking along a street in Springfield one day, holding the hands of his two boys. They were crying loudly. A neighbor asked, what's the matter with the boys, Abe? Lincoln replied, the matter with them is the matter with the world. One has a nut and the other one wants it. That is one of the world's biggest problems. People want what other folks have. They want more and more. The world is plagued with greed. Politicians want more power. That has caused wars. People want more money, more possessions, more land. Children want more toys. The Bible clearly demonstrates the danger of greed. Last Sunday evening, we looked at the story of Naaman, and that's a fairly familiar story to us. But there's something that happens just after the account of Naaman being cleansed of his leprosy that perhaps we have not studied as often. And <clears throat> this is an interesting story that shows the results of being greedy. Our text is 2 Kings chapter 5, verses 20 through 27. Gehazi, the servant of Elisha, the man of God, said to himself, My master was too easy on Naaman, this Aramean, by not accepting from him what he brought. As surely as the Lord lives, I will run after him and get something from him. So Gehazi hurried after Naaman. When Naaman saw him running toward him, he got down from the chariot to meet him. Is everything all right? he asked. Everything is all right, Gehazi answered. My master sent me to say, Two young men from the company of the prophets have just come to me from the hill country of Ephraim. Please give them a talent of silver and two sets of clothing. By all means, take two talents, said Naaman. He urged Gehazi to accept them, and then tied up the two talents of silver in two bags with two sets of clothing. He gave them to two of his servants, and they carried them ahead of Gehazi. When Gehazi came to the hill, he took the things from the servants and put them away in the house. He sent the men away, and they left. Then he went in and stood before his master, Elisha. Where have you been, Gehazi? Elisha asked. Your servant didn't go anywhere, Gehazi answered. But Elisha said to him, Was not my spirit with you when the man got down from his chariot to meet you? Is this the time to take money? or to accept clothes, olive groves, vineyards, flocks, herds, or men servants and maid servants. Naaman's leprosy will cling to you and to your descendants forever. Then Gehazi went from Elisha's presence, and he was leprous as white as snow. Gehazi was the servant of Elisha. And we first met him back in chapter four, in the account of the Shunammite woman. In chapter 5, Naaman has just been cleansed of his leprosy. Verses 15 and 16, Then Naaman and all his attendants went back to the man of God. He stood before him and said, Now I know there is no God in all the world except in Israel. Please accept now a gift from your servant. The prophet, that is, Elisha, answered, As surely as the Lord lives whom I serve, I will not accept a thing. And even though Naaman urged him, he refused. Naaman had made the offer of gifts to Elisha. He was grateful for being healed. He had come equipped to give gifts. But Elisha says, I will not accept a thing from you. In our text, Gehazi sees an opportunity to gain some money and possessions from Naaman. As we look at our text, we first see Gehazi's greed plan. Gehazi had the desire for more possessions. Now, it's not a bad desire in and of itself to want something that you don't have. But you always have to keep those desires in check. Gehazi saw the opportunity to satisfy his greed. He was going to get something for nothing. Greed is usually a sin that you have to plan for. You have to think about it in advance. It's not usually something that just falls, that you just fall into suddenly. 
Greed is excessive desire for wealth or power. It's having that feeling that you just can't get enough. It's like the fire looking for the next tree or shrub. Gehazi was not satisfied with what he had. He wanted more. He wanted to get ahead in life. We must take care to keep ourselves from the sinful attitude of greed. There are warnings about this throughout Scripture. In the setting of the parable of the rich fool, we read these words in the Gospel of Luke. Beware and be on your guard against every form of greed. For not even when one has an abundance does his life consist of his possessions. Watch out for greed. Possessions will not give you meaning in life. Greed is associated with covetousness. In Exodus chapter 20, verse 17, the last command, you shall not covet your neighbor's house, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his male servant or his female servant or his ox or his donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. In 1 Timothy, Paul writes, For the love of money is a root of all sorts of evil. And some, by longing for it, have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many a pain. They will have many griefs because, not because of money, no, because of the love of money. 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 3, The elder is to be free from the love of money. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 2, Paul says that in difficult times, men will be lovers of money. And the Apostle Peter says of false teachers, in their greed, they will exploit you with false words. Greed is a sin. We must guard against this sin. Now, Christians will stumble into different sins, but greed can be prevented if we will nip it in the bud if we will stop it in the planning stages. It's said that a miser was converted. <clears throat> Soon afterward, a neighbor of his sustained a great loss. They were in need of the necessities of life. The former miser thought, I'll go out to the smokehouse and get a ham for my needy neighbor. As he walked toward the smokehouse, the devil tempted him, saying, only give him half a ham. The former miser was indeed tempted because he had been greedy and covetous for most of his life. But he overcame the temptation, saying, if you don't pipe down Satan, I'll give him every ham in the smokehouse. We should not plan greed like Gehazi did, but we should work to prevent it. We next see Gehazi's greed performed. Gehazi's greed was put into action. He planned it. And then he put his plan into action. It was necessary for Gehazi to be dishonest in order to satisfy his greed. He goes to Naaman and he says, my master has sent me. Well, that's lie number one. Then he says, two young men have come. Both of these were lies. The Bible tells of others who tried to satisfy their greed. I think a lot was experiencing greed when he chose the most desirable land. That did not turn out well for him. Ananias and Sapphira lied in an effort to appear generous, although they were really greedy. And Judas apparently had a problem with greed. He kept the money. He was the bookkeeper, the treasurer, but he was known to steal from it. His greed, perhaps, was one motivation in betraying Jesus. Today, people put their greed into action, just as Gehazi did. There will be the businessman who will be dishonest in his practices in order to outsell his competitor. <coughs> There's the manufacturer who may use inferior materials and allow sloppy workmanship in their greed for higher profits. Different times there have been tragedies because inferior products were made and sold. Politicians may accept illegal contributions, buy votes, use other dishonest practices to gain office. Sometimes Christians refuse to give because of greed. Christians may refuse to do good works because they don't want to part with their money. 
Greed can prevent the church from doing great things in the cause of Christ. We see next Gehazi's greed for seed. As I thought he could get away with his sinful plot, he forgot that Elisha was a prophet of God. Elisha could see what he was doing. And Elisha knew the actions of Gehazi. Again, Gehazi lies when he's asked about where he'd been. He said, I haven't been anywhere. Elisha said, didn't I see you? As a prophet, he knew what Gehazi had done. And we always need to remember that God knows everything we do, everything we think, everything we say. God knows when we are greedy. We may hide our actions from men and women, but not from God. Realizing that God knows our thoughts and actions should cause us to avoid greed and all other sins. And then we see Gehazi's greed punished. Greed brings punishment. There are consequences to sin. In Gehazi's day, case, he and his descendants were going to be struck with leprosy. Lot lost his family and his home. Ananias and Sapphira lost their lives. Judas committed suicide. Greed will bring eternal punishment. Matthew chapter 16, verse 26. What is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Greed causes a person to displease God. It is a sin. It is one that we must work against. Greed brings us trouble. There are consequences in this life to our greed. Now God does not punish us directly. But God has made greed a sin because he knew it would harm us. When things become more important than people, our relationships are damaged. We start to treat people like things. We see examples of the dangers of greed. There's an old story about a servant who was told by his master to keep away from a cave and to keep others away from that cave. The servant began to wonder about the reasons for his master's instructions. He decided that his master had hidden a treasure in the cave, and he decided to take the treasure for himself, himself. With the help of a fellow servant, he rolled the stone away from the mouth of the cave. A tremendous tiger came out and tore them both to pieces. Perhaps you've heard of the man who found a $5 bill in the ground. This is an old preacher story. I guess we should update it to a $20 bill he found. But at any rate, we've all had that, I think, that experience. I remember uh, I was actually driving along in a residential area uh, one time, I think, and looked down, there was something in the street, and I, sure enough, it was, it was money. Uh, this man, he was walking along, and he saw this money. And from that day on, he always looked to the ground as he walked along. Well, he ruined his posture. He missed the beauty of the sky and his surroundings. And for his greedy attitude, he lost much. Over the years, he found a few coins, some pins, and junk. In addition to the problems caused by our greed in this life, our greed can separate us from God, causing us be lost. From 2 Kings chapter 5, we should learn a striking lesson about greed. We see how Gehazi planned to satisfy his greed. We see how he satisfied his greed by dishonest means. We see that God knows our greed. We see that greed brings undesirable results both now and in eternity. We should always remember the dangers of being greedy. The New York police broke into a shabby dwelling in a rundown section of the city and found the body of a 77-year-old man who had died of slow starvation. In an adjoining room, among rubbish and old papers, 
They found bank books listing $67,000 in deposits. They also found bonds valued at $100,000. Greed can cause a rich man to starve himself to death. Even worse, greed can cause a person to lose their soul. Again, the words of Jesus, For what is a man profited if he should gain the whole world and lose his soul? We do well to remember Gehazi's grief.